So as we start to get close to the end of the final season of The Expanse, we're starting to see the cracks show in Marco's Free Navy. So, while we've discussed what the UN and Mars can do to bring down the Free Navy, and what the Free Navy can do to stand its best chance against the Inner Powers, I figured today we could take a look at exactly how I think the Free Navy is actually going to fail. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So before I begin, it should go without saying that this video will contain spoilers for the first four episodes of the sixth season of The Expanse, so if you haven't seen that yet, click up here for a video that's spoiler-free. So anyway, we've seen now the Free Navy go from carrying out these momentous attacks against Earth and Mars to kind of being on the run. With the Azure Dragon captured by the UN and some of their supply lines starting to fail, the situation for the Free Navy isn't looking great, especially after they abandoned Ceres, which was a major blow in multiple ways. And while these would make them very vulnerable to attacks by the stronger navies of the inner planets, we're not going to focus on that aspect today. Instead, we're going to look at one of the bigger issues that face the Free Navy, their internal struggles. As I mentioned in a video a couple weeks ago about how the Free Navy itself functions, Marco seems to be very good at rallying people to fight in military conflict, and probably pretty good at leading a nation at war. But when it comes to managing domestic policies and definitely handling a nation during peacetime, the Free Navy's leadership, specifically Marco, seem woefully incapable of carrying this out. And while this caused some minor issues early on, we're starting to see those issues spread. Marco's inability to care for the people of Ceres, even when they had firm control over the station, was already a problem, leading some of Ceres' leadership to sort of question whether allying with Marco was the right move. But now Marco has retreated from Ceres, handing the station over to the inner planets. While it is arguably a decent strategic move, putting the burden of maintaining Ceres on the inner planets, it's a terrible move for winning the hearts and minds of the people of the Belt, who, while they may have firmly sided with Marco before, now seem a little bit more divided. At this point in the timeline, we're starting to hear stories about unrest within Marco's territory. Planets and factions within the Free Navy that are starting to question whether the Free Navy is best, and even individuals that seem to be going against the actions of the Free Navy. To counter this, facilities and stations that are aligned with the Free Navy in a more official capacity are cracking down harder on their citizens. This results in things like the scientist that was killed on Gamamede simply trying to generate better crops, which could potentially benefit Earth in the aftermath of Marco's attacks. This is the beginning of the Free Navy fraying at the edges as a state. But as the people of the Belt become increasingly dissatisfied with Marco's leadership, some of the smaller factions that were operating within the Free Navy are starting to break away, or at least splinter. We see pirate groups that had pledged their allegiance to Marco now sort of fraying, with segments of them going off to join rebel groups to fight against Marco's cause. These rebel groups we are now seeing are carrying out attacks against Marco's supply lines that were leading into the ring gate. This absolutely cripples Marco's ability to not just carry out whatever he's planning to do with Medina Station, but fight a continuing war against the inner worlds. Without these supply lines and without Ceres Station, Marco's ability to fight a war against his adversaries, both foreign and domestic, is beginning to become depleted. And while Marco himself still remains relatively lucky in combat, his organization and his movement might just fall out from under him if it loses too much support. And with the powerful blow we see Kamina carry out against one of these supply depots, I think it's entirely possible that we see smaller factions within the Free Navy breaking off to either join Kamina's pirate group or join other rebel factions. With each little group of warships that departs the Free Navy to join another rival group, not only does Marco's navy get weaker, but his adversaries get stronger. And while we don't know for sure right now, I don't think there's anything that Marco could bring to the table that could make a significant enough change to really tip the scales in his favor at this point. So while his attacks against Earth and Mars may have irreparably changed those locations, his faction at this point seems doomed to fail either from external pressure or internal pressure. But the Free Navy itself is a fascinating faction, a collection of smaller factions within the OPA, and if you'd like to learn more about the Free Navy, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think this is how the Free Navy is going to fail. Do you think it'll collapse from the inside with a sort of internal uprising, or do you think the Rosinante and the UN and the MCRN are going to lead a massive charge that 
crushes the free navy from the outside. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.